So let's go ahead and set up JWT authentication uh, within a fresh Laravel project. You may already have JWT authentication set up on your API, that's absolutely fine. This is gonna work with an existing solution, but if you wanna follow this along and learn the whole stack, then we're gonna go through this together now. So I haven't even created a Laravel project yet, so I'm just inside of a view auth directory. Uh, both our client and our API are gonna live in here, so we're gonna create, of course, two separate projects. So let's go ahead and pull in a new, fresh Laravel project and just call this API. We'll just wait for this to finish. Okay, so just while everything is downloading, uh, I'm gonna come over and create a database here. Uh, so let's create a really simple view auth database, not in capitals. And we can actually come over to our project in our editor and we can start filling in the EMV uh, stuff just while this is finishing. So I'm using Postgres, but of course this is gonna work with MySQL in exactly the same way. So I'm just gonna switch over the database port and the DB connection. Uh, the database here, as we've already seen, is view auth. The username for me is just my full name because I'm just working with a local uh, installation here. And the password for me is nothing. So I'm just gonna leave this blank. Okay, so as you can see, the installation is probably finished now. If we just hop back over here, that's all done. And we can CD into API and we can run PHP Artisan Serve just to boot this up. So we can in fact just open this up in our browser. And sure enough, we have a fresh Laravel installation. Now, we're not gonna be doing this inside of the browser. We're gonna be doing this inside of Postman, which is just a REST client. Uh, so let's go and just grab that URL that we had over here. Let's just open this up in our browser again and just copy this over to Postman so we can start to make some requests to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just send a get request here. Uh, you'll notice that we get just the uh, standard Laravel stuff here and we can start to work with this. Now, because we're working with an API, I'm just gonna go ahead and add in the accept header here and I'm gonna set this to application JSON. So when we do make JSON requests and we get JSON content back, we will actually see a correct response. Of course, we don't have any endpoints just yet, uh, but we'll get to that very soon. So I'm gonna go and follow the instructions for JWT auth. I never remember these, so we're just gonna follow these together. Uh, so let's go ahead and just exit off the GitHub page and come over to the documentation and head over to the Laravel installation section. Now, I actually do wanna bring up the GitHub page here, so let's open this up, because I do wanna go and grab a very specific version of this, uh, and we're gonna grab the Release Candidate 5 version, uh, although this is a pre-release. So we're going to install this in the normal way, but uh, we want to pull in the version that works with Laravel 6.4, which is the version I'm working with here. So let's go into our directory, so code tutorials, view auth, and API. And let's go ahead and do a composer require on this. Let's pull this in here. And we wanna pull in this specific version, so I'm just gonna wrap this in double quotes and just wait for that to finish. Okay, so that's all pulled in. You might not need to do this depending on when you're watching this course. Just keep an eye on the versions that are compatible uh, with the Laravel version that you're pulling down. Okay, so let's go back over to the documentation and just follow the rest of the steps. We don't need to add a service provider because of course we're working with Laravel 6.4 here. We do wanna publish the configuration, so let's come over and do that quickly. And let's also generate the JWT secret key as well, which will just ensure that we get nice, uh, as secure as possible tokens. Okay, so I'm just gonna head over to the text editor again and you should see the JWT secret in there, which is great. Uh, what we're gonna do is head over to config and JWT, and I'm just going to go and set the time to live to have a much higher value. So you can either change this directly in here, or you can stick this over in your EMV. So let's go over to EMV very quickly, and let's just set this to something really high, just for now while we're testing so it doesn't expire. But of course, the you can set the minutes to a week that you want it to expire at or a month depending on your use case. Okay, so the rest of the instructions really just tell us how to uh, get this set up uh, inside of our application. So we need our user model to implement the JWT subject. So let's head over to our user model and let's go ahead and implement that JWT subject class and go ahead and import that at the top. And we need two methods as part of that, which are get JWT identifier and any custom claims that we want to send along with the token, which we're not gonna uh, 
uh, add in just at the moment. So it's just add a little dock block in there. Uh, this will just grab the primary key. So for example, user one, that will just be one. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's just check out uh, configuring the authentication guard. So if we come over to config and auth, we just want to change this over because we're using now API authentication. So I'm just seeing this as building a standalone API on its own. So for the API driver, we can set that and change that over now to JWT. And now when we use the auth guard within Laravel, that will generate for us a, uh, an API token or a JWT token to use with API. So we don't need to follow the instructions for adding the authentication routes. We're going to code them all by hand. Uh, we've now successfully set up our API and we can start to look at some endpoints. So for example, we want API slash auth sign in. We probably want to send a post request over to that. And in the body, we want to send over an email address, uh, depending on how you're signing your users in. So we'll say codecourse.com for now, alex at codecourse.com and a password we're going to want to send over as well. And I'm going to be setting this up just with a user uh, with alex at codecourse.com and password. Of course, if we send this over just now, we get a not found HTTP exception because we haven't set up any of our routes yet. But that's JWT authentication set up and pretty much ready to go. OK, so if we head over to the terminal, let's go ahead and say PHP Artisan make controller. Let's put this in the auth directory and I'm going to call this sign in controller. Now, I'm not going to generate this just yet. We're going to head back over to here. I'm going to go ahead and delete what we don't need from our uh, basic authentication. You can implement these later, but I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that entire auth uh, controller set. So let's generate this sign in controller just while we're here. Why don't we generate the sign out controller and also the me controller as well. So let's create that. And if you're not sure what that is, I'll explain in just a moment. OK, so we've got these three controllers now. We can head over to our auth routes or our API routes and we can start to create these out. So let's just do this from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and create a root group here just to make things a little bit easier. We're going to set the prefix here to auth. So any of the routes that fall under this closure just here will have a prefix of auth in the URL, which really, really helps. And we can also add a namespace in here as well. So we don't have to keep declaring which namespace these fall under. So I'm going to say these belong in the auth namespace and we can just start to generate out some of these routes. So let's say we want to post to sign in. Well, that's going to reference the sign in controller. And um, we're not going to add an action in here. I'm just going to use the standard invoke PHP method, uh, which means that we have a single controller for each thing. And I like to do this just keeps things a lot tidier. Uh, why don't we just declare the other routes as well? So let's post to sign out and reference the sign out controller. And let's do a get request to me. And what that will do is it will return to us the authenticated users information, which is really important uh, for when we land back on our app. So if I send a post request to this now, we get an invalid root action, which is absolutely fine. All we need to do now is head over to the sign in controller. Go ahead and create an invoke method. And what that will do, if we just die dump and say hello, that should allow us now to send that request across. And it still looks like, ah, of course. So we need to add these for each of the routes because it's trying to register these. So let's just add them in each of them. Perfect. OK, so let's send us a request here. And sure enough, we get hello dumped out. Great. So now what we can do is look at actually authenticating the user. We haven't run our migrations yet, so we don't have our database set up. Let's do that now and generate a fake user and get this working. So I'm going to run PHP Artisan Migrate. We're just going to use the standard migrations that come with Laravel. If we head over to our database now, we should see that users table in there. And I'm just going to go ahead and run PHP Artisan Tinker here, which will allow me to, using the user factory, go ahead and create a user in here by hand. You don't need to do this. Of course, you can create a register controller to actually create a user. But I'm just going to create a user in here with the name of Alex Garrett Smith, just so we can see that on the front end. Uh, we'll go ahead and choose the email address that we want to register as well, which is alex at codecourse.com. And we can go ahead and add in a password here as well. And we can use the bcrypt helper just to generate a hash for the password password. Uh, uh, let's just have a look at what we've done here. 
and this is probably just because we have a double slash here perfect so that's generated a user in the database let's come back over to the database uh, with all of them details I specified and this password hash is now just password great so we've got a user that we can actually authenticate with now so I can go ahead and actually send this request across with alex at cocourse.com and password and I should get back by the end of uh, sorting this out a token that I can use to authenticate with for future requests so let's get this uh, all set up and let's bring in our request object here which will allow us to extract information from our request and this is really really simple inside of this if statement I'm going to assign a value to this token at the same time I'm going to check if it fails so I can return a 401 and I'm going to use the auth helper to attempt authentication and from the request we're going to grab just the email address and the passwords they're the two things that we want to use to try and authenticate now if this succeeds token will contain the JWT token otherwise we can just return a response here and we can just do a null response with a 401 so for example if we head over here and I just get rid of the password and send this across we get a 401 unauthorized now of course I'm not adding validation here but feel free to add in uh, standard Laravel validation uh, as you need so let's send this across again and we get a 200 OK. So that looks like the token has actually been successfully generated. So what we can do now is outside of this if statement, send a JSON response with a token, which of course is just that token. Now, if you're just doing a really simple response like this and you wanna clear this up, you can just do compact token. That just clears things up a little bit. Uh, just a little tidy tip there. Okay, so we have successfully authenticated and we have our JWT token. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this over. I'm gonna come over to a new request here, and we're gonna make a get request to me. Now what this should allow us to do is as long as we are authorized, so if we choose bearer token and paste this token in, we should be able to send a get request to this. Using that token, it will automatically authenticate us and it will give us back the current uh, authenticated users information so with this endpoint what we actually need to do is set up some middleware here because we need to be authenticated to access this so we're going to create our constructor and I'm going to add in some middleware you can do this at the root level if you prefer but I just prefer to say auth API and have it within the controller so the difference now is if I just get rid of the die dump here when we send this request across now we should see a 200 but if I select no auth we should see a 401 unauthorized and we get a little JSON response back here from the JWT package okay so let's switch this back to our bearer token we are authenticated and now inside of the request to this endpoint we have that user's information so Let's just die dump on request user just to grab that user's information out for now. Send this request across and sure enough you get all of the information about that currently authenticated user. So the purpose of this endpoint if you're new to authentication uh, with API and client is when we land on our application we want to send a request to this to grab that user's information and kind of hydrate the store on the client side and we'll learn all about that as we go through the course. But let's just go ahead and grab the user out of the request for now as we did a moment ago with the die dump and let's just return a really simple response you can use uh, uh, transformers here if you want to but we're just going to keep things really simple for now and we're just going to return the user's email address so user email and also the user's name as well so we can identify them on the client side so let's send this request across and sure enough we get that information back. If you were to create a new user in your database and send that information across here and grab a new token and send another request across with their bearer token, you would get their information back. So there are the two key endpoints that we need to be able to authenticate uh, on the client side with JWT tokens. Now the last thing we're going to do is just fill in the sign out controller which is really really simple. Uh, you can go ahead and pull in the middleware for this because of course we shouldn't really need to access this unless we are signed in. Uh, we don't need to do that, it's entirely up to you. But all we're going to do in here is just say auth 
log out. Now that will do a couple of things. Well, it will do one main thing, which is invalidate that token. And that's really important. You don't want a JWT token to live past uh, the fact that someone has signed in. So when someone does sign in and send a log out request, what that will do is invalidate or blacklist that token which means that it can't be used again. So if someone's account was compromised, if their JWT token was somehow exposed and they signed out, that token will be blacklisted, which means that it cannot be used. So as long as someone signs out from their account, they're fully signed out and the JWT token that we've been using here will be invalidated. And we can test that by duplicating this tab over and sending a post request to sign out. Remember this token here is still valid. I can still use it. But when I send a post request to sign out and I have that authorization token in there, when I send another request across, that token now no longer works. So that is really, really important. So what we've done here is set up a really basic JWT authentication API. Uh, we've installed the JWT auth package. We've allowed users to sign in and grab their token. We've allowed them to get information about themselves using their token and we've also allowed them to sign out e.g. blacklisting their token as well. So we've got our three endpoints set up that we need. We can go over and start to look at how we use this on the client side using Vue.js. So let's head over and get the whole of the client done so we can authenticate using Vue.